achieving stability. Now, once a team has the practices in place that uh, enable code to be delivered, that's free from defects and bugs, the next priority is to get that code into production, into a production environment in a stable fashion. Now, chances are that you don't just have a new piece of software um, and that's all you have. You have existing pieces of software in production that have some stability issues from time to time. You know, stability issues can have one or more, uh, you know, maybe of these common symptoms. Sluggishness is common. Outages, or maybe it goes offline. Error messages or frozen screens. Uh, abnormal behavior or, or bugs that can't be reproduced by engineers. They only happen in production. When, when the users report any of these symptoms, then you have a production issue. And, and having a good language around these symptoms gives you clarity in your oversight duties. Remember, you're the software executive. You got to oversee all of this. And you want to make sure that the appropriate stability measures are in place to track the stability. Um, if the software is not stable, it's not going to do its job. So you need to ensure the stability of your software as it runs in production. Now, Sometimes teams can be a little gun shy of production deployments. Um, you know, they, they might sometimes advocate for monthly deployments or maybe after hours deployment events with, with everybody, you know, all hands on deck. And this is technically unnecessary, um, but is commonly born from a, from a previous unpleasant experience making changes to a production environment. They're gun shy. They've, they've been shot before. Uh, you know, after a deployment, goes bad, developers can, can really become hesitant. They can become wary and distrustful, uh, distrustful of the process because they consider it dangerous. You know, they've experienced it being dangerous. But a large inventory of undeployed software, well, that's not only a, a big investment that isn't generating any, any return from the business, it's also a growing risk of unproven software changes. Now, let's think about other departments again. All departments that manage throughput understand the power of limiting work and process, WIP. Um, infrequent deployments uh, queue up way too many changes that are waiting for a big, stressful, error-prone deployment event. Now, ultimately, your two goals to achieve stability are to one, prevent production issues, and two, Minimize undeployed software. In other words, get the software out there so it can start yielding the business a return on the investment you've made in it. And you can measure these on the team's scorecard with tracking weekly metrics. All right. Metric number one, number of deployments for the week. It's just a number. Metric number two, number of production issues for the week. And of course, you want to divide these by severity with this. SEV1, the system's completely down versus, you know, two, three, four, whatever categorization you use. And then you also want to measure MTTR. That's the mean time to recovery or average time to resolve the issue. Now, as with uh, overseeing the bugs on the quality side, um, you can ask your team the same questions to drive the right behavior. You can ask, hey, uh, what, uh, what features or changes are, are tested and ready for production? Then you can ask, hey, uh, what was the root cause of that production issue? And what are we changing so that this type of issue can never happen again? Or you could ask, uh, hey, what should we strengthen about our environment so that we're able to resolve issues faster next time? Okay, that's just some sample questions. And also, as with quality, there's a minimum set of practices that every team should employ if you have the expectation of running a stable software system in a production environment. All right, let's just go over uh, the minimum. First, automated DevOps from day one of a new project. And, and, and the goal of that is to eliminate manual monthly deployments. You want to have automated deployments all the way from code, uh, builds, test, release candidates, deployment. All right, second, you want to have small releases, not big releases, small releases. You want to be able to deploy uh, when something is ready, whenever, whatever time of day. Third, you want runtime automated health checks. That's, think of, think of a car having a built-in self-diagnostic that you plug something into the car and it tells you the error codes. Okay, you want to have a built-in health check. And four, you want to have explicit 
secrets management because security is such an ongoing risk and attacks are happening all the time. And that's just the minimum. There's going to be other, other practices to prevent issues. When a production, uh, when, when production issues start to crop up, if you have issues in production that are happening over and over again, they, they will from time to time. Um, the following practices are going to enable the team to diagnose them quicker and come to resolution. All right, so let's go over those practices. One, centralized open telemetry logging and, and, and also metrics and traces, okay? Um, if if you don't have centralized telemetry, look into that. The great standard open telemetry that kind of all the tool vendors are using is great. Second, an APM, which, which stands for Application Performance Management, an APM tool with a shared operations dashboard. Third, a formal support desk tool with ticket tracking, anomaly alerts, and emergency alarms. Okay. All right. Now, if some of this sounded familiar, it's because many of them are the software parallel of practices to operate any other factory or assembly line in a factory. If, you know, if a part of a production line experiences an issue, it's an obvious alert with staff springing into action to resolve that problem locally before it becomes a factory outage. And for more serious problems, emergency alarms, just stop the line and call everyone's attention to rally around the problem and get the production line up and functioning again. And while the tools are different, the way of thinking is the same. So here's some questions to ask your team in order to gain insight into how these may or may not be implemented. You can ask, hey, uh, would you please give me a tour of our logs and telemetry that allow me to see you know, how the users are using our software, what they're doing? Or you could ask, how do we currently train a new team member to be on call for production support? And, uh, and what dashboards should they be looking at to ensure the software is functioning in a stable fashion? Or you could also ask, what events currently trigger an alert and what events currently trigger an emergency alarm? Okay, who receives the alerts and how? How do we all receive the alarms? Okay, ask those questions. All right, so that's stability. 